before we begin talking about equilibrium again, let's take a moment to pull some threads together. We know from our work with Hess's law several chapters ago that the change in enthalpy for a reaction will equal the sum of the heats of formation of the products minus the sum of the heats of formation of the reactants. In the last assignment, we used a similar equation for finding the change in entropy for a reaction. We said that the change in entropy of the reaction is the sum of the entropies of the products minus the sum of the entropy of the reactants. You can use a similar formula for finding the change in free energy for a reaction. You can use the sum of the free energies of formations of the products, that's that delta GF, minus the sum of the change in free energy of the reactants. So we have a lot of variables here. We've seen delta HF, that's the heat of formation, that's how much energy is absorbed or released when you form a compound from its pure elements. We just saw a delta GF, that is the free energy of formation, so how much free energy is absorbed or released when you form a compound from its base elements. And then we've seen these degree symbols, delta H, delta S, and delta G, and the degree symbols referring to standard conditions, one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. We've seen the delta G at standard conditions. There's an equation given in the text for finding delta G at other temperatures. And the equation looks like this. To find the delta G at some temperature, you could take the standard delta G value and add RT ln of Q. T we know, T is temperature, that's in Kelvin. R is our universal gas constant, or our ideal gas constant. Now there are several values of R that we've used. Because we're talking about energy here, we're going to use the 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin unit. Now, fair warning here, that's in joules, and your delta G values are often expressed in kilojoules, so we're going to have to be careful with our units. LN of Q, well Q is the reaction quotient. Q is the tool that we use to figure out if we're at equilibrium or not. So here is our first tie-in of combining free energy with the notion of an equilibrium statement. So let's take a look at this equation in an example. And the best example I could find was actually from the back of this chapter. This is number 65 from the text. Using our favorite appendix, appendix 4, I want to calculate the delta G for this reaction. Now the reaction is at standard temperature, which is good, but the reaction is not at equilibrium. So we're going to have to find the Q value. Utilize the equation delta G equals delta G naught plus RT ln of Q. Well, let's find a delta G naught. Delta G naught is going to be the sum of the standard free energies of formation of the products minus the reactants. So my products are going to be NO2, which has a standard free energy of formation of 52, plus O2 gas, which is a free element, so it doesn't have any heat of formation or free energy of formation, minus the free energy of formation of my reactants. So NO is 87 plus O3 ozone, which is 163. negative 198 kilojoules. I know R, that's my gas constant, I'm given T, so I need Q. Q is going to be my reaction quotient, so this is going to come from the equilibrium expression. It's going to be the partial pressure of NO2 times the partial pressure of O2 divided by the partial pressure of NO times the partial pressure of ozone, O3. So that's going to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 7, 1 times 10 to the negative 3, all over 1 
times 10 to the negative 6 times 2 times 10 to the negative 6. That equals 50. And remember, we can ignore the units when doing equilibrium expressions and reaction quotients. So we can calculate delta G now. Delta G equals delta G naught, which is negative 198 kilojoules. That's really kilojoules per mole plus R, which is 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin, times 298 Kelvin, times the ln of 50. So we have to be mindful of units here. All right. My Kelvin are going to cancel out Kelvin, but I have kilojoules here and joules here. So delta G is going to equal negative 198 kilojoules per mole plus 9,692 joules per mole. If I convert this to 9.692 kilojoules per mole, I get a final statement of negative 188 kilojoules per mole. So the reaction is spontaneous, but not as spontaneous as it was under standard conditions.